In today's news, BVI missed out on more than 450,000 plus passenger cruise passengers as CDC continues to extend no sale order. Mail participates in mangrove restoration and another 18 new cases of coronavirus in the U.S. Virgin Islands. All this and more when 2 at 4 News returns. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up. Start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing. Every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. In the final analysis, we have two options. Stay inside and create memories that will last forever, or go outside and say goodbye to those memories. We're not stuck inside, we're safer inside. The time is now to unite, embrace, and love each other from a distance. Show the world and the people in it just how much they mean to you by keeping your distance. It may be difficult, but necessary. Let's reintroduce humanity and heart to all homes. While we can't enjoy the sun, sand, and sea, let's take this time to remember why we are nature's little secrets. Stay inside, and when it's over, we would all be better, stronger, and we would all still be together. With self-discipline and patience, we can overcome. We are, have been, and will always be BI Strong. A message from your team at 284 Media. Welcome, everybody. It's Monday, July 20th, 2020. I'm Ron Grant. And I am Kyla Kenesha Forbes. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. We have so much uh, in store for you. Lots happened over the weekend, so let's get right into let's it. Let's get right into On it. On a negative note, however, recently a pedestrian was walking along the East End Public Road in the vicinity of Five Girls General Store when he was struck by a white car. Now, as a result, he sustained injuries and was taken to the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital where he was treated and discharged. Now, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is continuing to seek the public's assistance in this regard. Anyone with information pertaining to the incident is asked to contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force at its three-digit access number. That's 311 or the East End Police Station, 368-9742. Again, that's 368-9742. Uh, definitely a uh, cause for concern, Kyla, um, as we have... Uh, a few hit and run incidents happening occurring um, and it's very unfortunate we are happy to see that uh, this gentleman uh, is recovering well and we continue to uh, seek the public's assistance in this matter mm. continuing on on the local scene on Thursday July 16th 15 young men from the uh, male participated in the first mangrove restoration planting from the Center of Applied Marine Studies Mangrove Nursery at the H. Lavity Stout Community College. Starting off this momentous event, Minister of Natural Resources, the Honorable Vincent Wheatley, spoke to the youth about a mangrove and our need for restoration and to protect them. Jakaila Rogers and Alexia Penn, interns to the Mangrove Nursery Project, led the youth group through educational games, which they designated specifically uh, for the CAMS Mangrove Project. Now, these games included Heads Up, Charades, and Tree of Life, all centered on aspects of Mangrove's ecosystem, how they are uniquely able to live in constantly wet uh, soil, uh, salty soil, that is, their role in protecting us from storms and sustaining us in a blue economy. Now, the young men of male who continue to do amazing things, Kyla, they uh, visited the still developing mangrove nursery at the H. Lavity Stout Community College, where the very first red mangrove prop galus uh, were brought into uh, culture six weeks ago. Now, these prop galus, nursed in floating buckets, arrays suspended in the Parakeeta Bay Lagoon, were just starting to show their first leaves and developed roots. 
uh, however, Dr. Lil Liliana Jiraki, Head of Marine and Marine Studies and Director of the Mangrove Nursery, with assistance from the Mangrove Nursery interns, Ms. Rogers and Ms. Penn, and the Mangrove technician, Joseph Wells, led the youth to plant these first mangrove seedlings in all. Now about 45 seedlings were planted to restore a previously damaged site at the Inner Lagoon at Parakeeta Bay. In 2008, an excavator removing a large grounded catamaran had cleared a large uh, area, about two acres of mangroves at that same location. Since then, mangroves have not been able to grow back. While Dr. Jiraki does not expect all 54 seedlings to survive, she strongly believes that enough will thrive to cover the damaged shoreline. Interns to the project will monitor the seedlings, of course, their growth over the next five weeks. Now, the CAMS Mangrove Nursery and Internship Program is funded by the Unite BVI and, of course, Falconwood Foundation with proceeds from both of these organizations. It is partnered with the Joss Van Dyke Preservation Society and with the wider community through the Ministry of Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration. Now, the local youth groups and many other public and private entities have also stepped up to help revitalize the resilience of this rebuilding project. Commercial Dive Services has been especially generous in the early building stages by clearing remaining hurricane debris, creating anchoring posts for the floating bucket nursery, and rebuilding the cat's dock. I am so happy uh, to see the young men of male continuing to serve their community, and they're surrounded, always surrounded by uh, like-minded uh, men in our community who have their best, best interests at heart. Um, I definitely applaud them, and particularly as we approach the hurricane season, we know how important um, our Come ecosystem exactly. uh, is and how much they protect us too. Uh, so it's happy to, I'm happy to see them you know, instilling those values from a very young age. I love this story simply because, as simple as it might sound, uh, we need to understand here in the BVI how important mangroves yes. really are to us. Of course, as we sustained those injuries from back in 2017, we must now try to um, rearm ourselves and our, our, our surroundings as we, as you said, um, head back into another hurricane season and just every year um, going on to that. But as we move on now, in a press conference held last week, the CEO of the Cerro B. Rumney Tortola Pear Park, Mr. Vance Lubis, spoke to the BVI's readiness to reopen to cruise liners. Mr. Lewis explained that these decisions will be based on the no-sale order, which was issued by the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention which we know as the CDC. Mr. Lewis said, and I quote, in speaking with them periodically, we are just making sure that we are all on the same page. We all have a consistent approach to what we want to do so that welcoming passengers are safe and our local population remains safe as well. Well, later that week, which was last week, the CDC announced its no sale order for um, cru for cruise ships and unfortunately cruise ships from the US aren't embarking anytime soon. The extended order is in effect until September 30th or until the CDC director withdraws or modify the order or the COVID-19 public health emergency declared by the Department of Health and Human Services expires. The no-sale order originally went into effect on March 14th as the coronavirus cases were starting to really spike in the United States. The Cruise Lines um, International Association, better known as CLAIR, an industry group representing more than 50 cruise lines globally, was ahead of this decision and has already voluntarily extended its suspension of cruise operations for for U.S. ports through September 15th. That extension was announced in June 19th. Since all ship operators affected by CDC's no-sale order are clear um, members, the CDC extended its own order through September 2020. But really and truly, Juan, we need to ask ourselves, what does this really mean Indeed. for the BVI, essentially? Now, Mr. Lewis stated that the territory was anticipating 425 
thousand cruise passengers that's guaranteed passengers this year the tortola pair park has contracted disney cruise lines to deliver 75,000 passengers annually and the norwegian airlines um, cruise lines that is to deliver 350,000 passengers annually as he explained the impact this would have this he said and I quote, by virtue of them not coming, they are just not coming. And we are talking about how we will deal with the absence of cruise passengers coming through here to the BVI, he means. Now, Mr. Lewis remained optimistic about the future. He said, and I quote, so far, we don't see any showstoppers. We don't see any high hurdles about how we deal with it. And from our point of view, one of the best things that can happen. Now, Ron, with 425,000 passengers, which was guaranteed to the BVI, Correct. and now with this extended order continuing to happen, um, we might just not see those cruise passengers or the tourism season at all here in the BVI. And I know that our leaders are staying optimistic about this, but I think it's time for us to really crunch numbers and see what this might really mean for the BVI. Well, Kyla, optimism is all well and good. I, I love the uh, ability to be optimistic, but the ability to be realistic is also uh, a very important. And I think um, in this uh, present time, that's what we need to uh, really be um, focusing on. You talk about crunching numbers, uh, but in the interim, um, uh, up until that point when we are able to receive cruise passengers, what are we doing to uh, navigate uh, through this very um, uh, trying time? What measures are we putting in place? We've spoken a lot about um, staycations and that's not significant enough um, and it's it's going to take some you know uh, real creativity to pull us through this time but I think that's what needs to be uh, had first of all a real sit down and a, a, a dissecting of the industry to see where and when we could you know integrate some different concepts but as I said optimism is good but it's definitely uh, 450,000 uh, Cruise passengers. cruise passengers and then none at all uh, it's it's not a, a, a it's not realistic you know and, and it's not a, a, a easy thing to just you know walk over this is going to be detrimental severely detrimental uh, to the tourism product of the B BBI as it's already proven to be so and this extension is simply um, to September 30th but we can see this well going beyond that Correct. time yeah. and probably to the end of the year so we must be realistic and really try to jump on this as soon as possible because we don't want to be lackadaisical to these facts and then then what mm -hmm. viewers are still ahead five singers advanced the gen y factor finals all this and so much more when 284 news returns i love you penny run forest run Having withdrawals from being stuck in the house for so long? Are you tired of looking at your old photos and daydreaming about your next vacation? Well, BVI Staycation is back and there's so much to choose from. For more information on upcoming deals, follow us on Facebook at BVI Staycation. Get ready, BVI, for an adventure in paradise. It's time to vacation where we live. Father Jesus, that line you long like church service. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer line, please. Hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come this. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut one tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man. Take care of me. How may I assist you? Yeah. You want a top of all? Eh? You want a top of all? Eh? Uh, Join a prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions.
promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want Top Up Oa. Viewers, welcome back. You're watching 284 News. Now, continuing on on the local scene, five contestants will continue to the finals of the Gen Y Factor 2020 competition titled Glee Edition, Battle of the Schools. The finalists are Janique Gordon of the H. Lavity Stout Community College, Taraya Price of Brigado Flax Educational Center, Taraya Ramsaran of St. George's Secondary School, Michaela Pollock of uh, Sibony Center for the Excellence, uh, Shakiba Pickering, Elmore Stout High School. Now, the semifinals premiered on Facebook Live on July 13th and is available to view as a two-part series at the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports page at DYASBVI, that's all caps. Now, Director of Youth Affairs and Sports, Mrs. Brenda Ty Letson, in an official comment, stated that the contestants did exceptionally well in the semifinals and encouraged those that did not make the final cut to continue improving their talent and pursuing their dreams. Mrs. Ty Letson said, or Mrs. Letson Ty, sorry, said, and I quote, We are very pleased with the talent displayed by this year's finalists and expect an exciting final competition. It will indeed be the battle of the schools. Now, the finals are slated for Saturday, August 15th at the Eileen L. Parsons Auditorium. Details and tickets uh, and start time, of course, will be communicated in a later uh, press release. The Gen Y Factor is an annual singing competition which is held for youth between the ages of 15 to 29. The competition is now in its fourth year, believe it or not, and the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports created the Gen Y Factor competition to give young people an opportunity to showcase their uh, singing ability, develop their skills, and encourage them to pursue a career. If you have any information at all, not only about the Gen Y Factor, but the Department of Youth Affairs um, and Sports in general, and particularly now as uh, summer is approaching and uh, many programs, summer programs are in session, you can contact them at 468-4949. Again, that number is 468-4949. Kyla, I'm so happy to see the Gen Y Factor continuing. Uh, we were a little bit nervous uh, with COVID-19 that it perhaps may not have happened. But they pulled it off. But they pulled it off and they continue to do remarkable things. Mrs. Brenda Ty Letson and her staff at the Department of Youth Affairs continue to find very creative um, and in uh, innovative ways of keeping our young people um, engaged and using their talents and I must commend them for their continued work. I think the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports uh, in its creation is, is truly um, excelling at its mandate and they're, they're making sure that the young people are exposed to a variety of um, different talents, uh, different skills. Activities, exactly. Whether it's swimming, uh, track and field, the department is really pulling out the stops and I think now more than ever in these critical times where our young people are um, not having that level of physical interaction and, and um, they're getting bored uh, but they're also spending a lot more time on the electronics Online. Uh, and here we see the department coming in full swing um, and stepping up yeah. to the plate I definitely love I've, I've loved seeing um, some of the activities that's been coming out of yes. this department um, yeah and if you know any youth or any persons that are just interested in these sorts of stuff, I definitely would say go and visit their Facebook page and see what we can get our youths involved in. Um, but Gen Y Factor have always been a, a star show. It's yeah. always been a great catch. So we're definitely just continuing on as they go into their finals. We will be keeping an eye on these students. Definitely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have so much more for you. Uh, an update on the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, COVID-19 situation. All this and more. You don't want to miss it. You're watching 284 News. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. In the final analysis, we have two options. Stay inside and create memories that will last forever, or go outside and say goodbye to those memories. We're not stuck inside, we're safer inside. The time is now to unite, embrace, and love each other from a distance. Show the world and the people in it just how much they mean to you by keeping your distance. It may be difficult, but necessary. 
Let's reintroduce humanity and heart to all homes. While we can't enjoy the sun, sand, and sea, let's take this time to remember why we are nature's little secrets. Stay inside, and when it's over, we would all be better, stronger, and we would all still be together. With self-discipline and patience, we can overcome. We are, have been, and will always be B.I. Strong. A message from your team at 284 Media. Viewers, welcome back. You're watching 284 News. Continuing on on the regional scene just over in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the VI Consortium has reported that as of today, um, Monday, there have been an additional 18 uh, new cases of the COVID-19 that were confirmed in the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, between uh, the weekend and today, according to the Department of uh, Infographic uh, from the Ministry of Health. St. Croix saw uh, uh, 16 new cases, as well as St. Thomas with the four new cases, and St. John one new case. There were 54 test results pending as of Saturday and a total of 6,938 tests were performed, out of which 6,587 returned negative with 297 positives. Now six people unfortunately have passed away in St. Thomas and four on St. Croix, uh, with four on St. Croix due to the virus. Two of the 12 cases on St. Croix were transmitted through uh, close contact, while 10 were transmitted um, through uh, travel. Now, there are also uh, 76 cases remain under investigation on St. Croix, while 21 were transmitted through community spread, 67 close contact, and 31 were travel-related. On St. Thomas, 17 cases were also uh, listed as travel-related, 34 close contact, 27 community spread, and 12 were under investigation as of Saturday night. On St. Joy, St. John, sorry, that's five cases were transmitted through community spread and five through travel. Two remain under investigation as of Saturday. Now, the Department of Health is tracking 108 active cases on St. Croix, 41 active cases on St. Thomas, as well as seven on St. John. Now, Kyla, we would have spoken about this situation over in the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, over the past few weeks. Um, other facilities in the U United States Virgin Islands have been exposed uh, to COVID-19, namely the Herbert Grigg Home for the Age. Now, thankfully, all persons at that facility have tested negative for COVID-19, and the facility remains on lockdown for the safety of its residents. And, of course, no word on the Youth Rehab Center in the state Anna's Hope on St. Croix on whether or not residents there um, were um, exposed. They were exposed, but we have not gotten confirmation as to whether um, anyone is uh, cleared. Um, now, we, of course, we're going to keep you uh, all posted and updated on the state of affairs as it pertains to COVID-19 over there in the U.S. Virgin Islands. But Kyla, as we continue to follow and we look at it closely, we see uh, where a lot of activities are, 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 are switching in the tone of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, it's almost a sense of a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. It has not been been declared as, as such, but definitely when you speak to residents and you speak to persons um, who are close with family, it seems as though it's a, a state of emergency. What we do not want to forget is while the, the cases continue to rise over in the U.S. Virgin Islands, they somehow still have a remarkable recovery rate. Mm, um, so do. that's important to uh, note. The recovery rate is um, impressive, uh, but, but it's definitely a, 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 a tough situation. I think there. we have continued to highlight the USVI's recovery rate. They have been doing a stellar job in that department. But I think it's very alarming when we look at how fast Correct. these um, cases are um, coming in. And I think one thing that Caribbean islands notably have really been trying not to do is overload um, their medical system yes and we're definitely hoping for the best over in the usvi because it is a bit scary and it's funny that you actually say that i think on some ends we do see where persons in the usvi is taking this very seriously right. and then on the other hand some persons aren't haven't really gotten the memo just as yeah, yet definitely but we've also we're also hearing uh, unconfirmed reports that um, there might be uh, some law some level of a shutdown that has not been confirmed yet and absolutely once uh, we get word on whether or not whether st. Croix or st. Thomas uh, will be moving towards any kind of shutdown we will let you know but uh, I think uh, governor Albert Bryan and his team are definitely trying their best definitely uh, trying no their one best. has been prepared for uh, a pandemic as such 
such. Um, and one of the things that he has been uh, instrumental in trying to do um, is keep the economy afloat. And yeah. I think we have to give him credit for, for that. that. Mm -hmm. um, unlike the BVI where our borders remain closed, um, they are still having some traffic. So they're still having uh, some, some economic, economic activity, activity mm -hmm. despite how small it is. And I think um, while persons are pushing for him to do this or him to do that, I think at the end of the day, that is his main focus to try to keep some money trying afloat. Trying to balance um, both. And we see where at the end of the day, um, perhaps uh, that piggy bank is getting a little low. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, but as we move on to our last story in the newscast, now the Bahamian Prime Minister announced travel restrictions in the Bahamas during a national address. Now, international commercial flights and commercial vessels carrying passengers will not be permitted to enter the Bahamas unless they are from Canada, the United Kingdom, or the European Union. Therefore, the U.S. is out of the loop. Now, wow. this is beginning Wednesday, July 22nd. This was said by Prime Minister, Minister Hubert Minnis. Effectively, immediately, its national air carrier, Bahamas Air, will seize all outgoing flights to the United States. Bahamas Air flies from Freeport and NASA to Fort Lauderdale or Hollywood International Airport, Miami International Airport, and West Palm Beach International Airport. 15 new cases were confirmed in the Bahamas, a record daily count since the onset of the pandemic in mid-March. There have been 49 new cases since the borders reopened in Jul on July First and 31 were from Grand Bahamas Island. Now, Bahamas closed its borders to travelers in March, which we saw a lot of Caribbean countries doing. Their tourism officials announced the reopening of its borders to international visitors on July 1st, as we said before. Now, Grand Bahamas, according to Minis, has seen a resurge of COVID-19 cases after being free of the virus for a little over two months. And he said, and I quote, the increase in cases coincide with the reinstitution of international flights and passengers sea transport. Now, Ron, the Bahamas isn't the only country that True. have somewhat blacklisted the United States. Now, here's a map that indicates countries that are opened, closed, or have some sort of restrictions to passengers coming from the United States. Now, in this map, Ron, we can see where it's mostly red, and red meaning that it is close to all U.S. citizens. Wow. Yellow, a little bit of restrictions. You can travel there, but there is restrictions. But the blue, the blue side of it, it's just about maybe about nine countries throughout the world that U.S. passengers are permitted to without any actually to travel to without any restrictions whatsoever. Now, the U.S. passport, as we remember, was once one of the most powerful... <laughs> Prized possessions. Yeah, yeah, travel documents. Now, in light of COVID-19, it seems it's no like its value have definitely re diminished in such a record-breaking time. Now, to date, the United States have recorded near to 5 million um, COVID-19 cases at 3,925,886 COVID-19 cases with 143 and 515 deaths thus far related to the virus. Um, the United States, Ron, is... Pretty, that's a pretty big story. Um, I, I, as you said, many persons have done it, but um, to see it come to this level is... Uh, I wouldn't say it's surprising. Uh, it's a bit um, daunting that these measures have to be taken, that countries feel as though they have to take these measures. But um, can I blame them? I really can't. Um, I think what we we'll like to get, what I'd like to clear up is, is it just for U.S. citizens? Um, if you present a blue passport, would you not be able to enter? Or is it persons coming from a U.S. territory? Correct, yeah. So we're definitely going to look into that. But as you said, it's very daunting, and we see how the world is changing right before Their our approach, eyes in very life. aggressive approach yeah 
Yeah. But viewers, guess what? That is it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com. Of course, you can like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. It's always my pleasure. I am Kyla Kenesha Forbes. And I'm Ron Grant. We'll see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose. Happy Monday, everybody. Have a great week.